That'll be a take, that. Welcome to Aston Park Fisheries. We're here to do a crafty catch a catch more session. So we're going to target Lily Lake, which is the specimen lake on site here. There's seven other lakes besides that. There's lots of different styles of fishing, match pools, match canals, big fish in these lakes up here. There's 30 pounds I believe in here. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we might nail one of those. I'm sure we're going to catch a few fish today. There's great facilities. We're just going to check out the cafe and have a bite to eat. Have a look in the shop, have a quick look around there. There's loads of crafty catch of products in here. So if you wanted to, buy any of the products that you see on this video be sure to visit the shop have a word with Alex uh, and he'll put you right on tactics and pegs Right, first look at the venue. The first thing I notice is it's tightly pegged on here, but you do have plenty of room behind you to bivy up. So that's one of the bonuses of this dam end. It's got a bit of deep water here as well. And there's a lot of cover inside. I think the margins will be good when that sun drops later on. Um, it's quite an open lake. I would imagine it's deeper here and shallower at the top. There are a few pleasure anglers on. There's quite a few carp lads as well. And the lads who have just left, believe it or not, have caught quite a few fish. So rubbing our hands here in anticipation. I think we're going to get a few fish here today, Ben, mate. Definitely. Come on, let's get the gear out. Well, good news. You've just joined me and we've hooked a fish. Proper one-tone screamer. I don't know how big it is, but it's the um, first fish of the session. On a 15 mil spicy krill. A little mesh bag, glugged in the old bag and bait booster. Oops, trying to get in these pads. Get out. It's not a massive fish, but it's a start. We're off the mark. Let's get it in that net. <laughs> it's scrapping well, though. The thing is, on these little waters as well, you don't need 13 foot rods three and a half pound test curve. You get much better sport. You're not chucking long distances. Little 10 foot rods are ample. These are free spirit bank creepers, about two and a half pound test curve. You feel every lunge on the fish. Oh, we've got one. 
first fish of the session. Like I said, I think it's probably going to be a bit of numbers game this, so keep putting that bait in. Keep them fish coming and uh, hopefully we'll get some of the bigger ones. I usually leave them in the water for five, ten minutes, maybe once I've one just to recover before we do anything with it. And you can set your cameras up and stuff like that then, can't you? Happy days we've caught a fish. Hey! <laughs> get that rig set up and get it back out. So now is a bit of a feeding spell, it's that time of day, so I think we'll get another pretty quick look at. I'm just gonna put another 20 baits out. And we'll chuck that rig straight back out. I want this fish and get it back out there. I'm gonna put them on a warm net. First one of the session. I'm sure there's going to be loads more in this session. This place got lots of carp in it, and I'm sure we're going to pick out some of the bigger ones as we go on. Let's get this one back and uh, see if we can catch another one quickly for the cameras. So a quick rundown on the rigs that I'm using on this venue. Uh, you've got to fish three running rigs. So basically it's a very simple rig. Uh, we've got a link swivel uh, with a lead attached to that. I've cut the actual swivel off the lead. So I've just nicked that swivel, the link swivel onto the lead. So that free runs on the line. It's stopped with uh, what's called a Jura bead. I think Avid do these, might be Avid or Corum. And basically it's a quick change swivel and the bead protects it and all you do is you put your hook link over that quick change, nick it on like so, pull it on and just slide the bead back over and that clicks into place like thus and that protection, your hook links will just got a figure of eight knot on a fluorocarbon barbless hooks, barbless hook rule on here up to a size six. Uh, so that's just straight through with a bit of fluorocarbon on a running rig. Simple rigs, eh? And that's what's caught, that's what's caught most of the fish. Bait wise, I've been using 15 mil boilies. Um, spicy krill and garlic is what I decided to use today. I know salty tuna works really well on here. Um, I was talking to a kid earlier when he was fishing one of these pegs when I arrived and he'd had quite a few fish on it. I know one of the two thirties, known 30s in here has been caught on the salty tuna recently as well. But just for a change, I've stuck with one that I like to catch, uh, which I've used before and caught fish on, which is spicy krill and garlic. Um, and that's been the successful bait and successful rig for this session. Right, so quick tip. Keep looking at those rings where that lead's just gone in. I know we've got a little stringer on, but we can ping a few baits around it as well. Fire them straight in where that's just landed. So not only have you got a three bait stringer out there, you've got another five, six, eight, ten, whatever you want to put in. Last time I put about 15 boilies around it for that last bite. So there's obviously a few fish out there. Let's see if that works for another bite. I think we're coming into bite time. So Get this landing net set back up quickly, just in case it rips off again. I think we'll knit, tie up some more PVA bags. I think we're gonna be in for a busy sesh. Right, here's a quick little tip for you. If you want to nick a PVA bag on and you wanna use the same rig, the hook's still razor sharp, the boil is fine. Uh, save you messing about, especially when it gets darker later because that's where it's gonna rip that PVA bag. So if you dunk it in one of these liquids, this is a particle and pellet booster. 
you can use anything if it's PVA, hemp oil, anything like that. Just dip it in, knit your bag on. It won't melt your bag because it's coated your rig. And you can chuck it straight back out into the lake without worrying about it ripping your bag open or melting your PVA. Tip over. Tip over. <laughs> tip. You tip over. No, the reason. <laughs> no, I just said fall over. No, I mean tip over because I've just realised my hair's stuck, my boily stops come off the hair. Just right, there's a tasty little margin spot on that under that tree. Just over there, and I couldn't cast to it and get it tied to it, so I'm gonna walk down the bank. I'm going to place it and walk it back and get the rod over this tree. I'm just going to feather that down. A good bit of depth there, probably five foot. Looks lovely for a bike, that. Let's see if we can catch one. You can actually lift your line over this tree. It's a bit easier than what I did prior. Just tighten up, sink the line. It's always better to place your rigs if you can. You can be much more accurate. You know your lead's landed nicely. It's not stuck in any debris. You know your rig's laid out nice. And with that little uh, mesh bag on it, you know, you've got a little tiny parcel of bait ready. So you set a lovely little trap in that margin. I feel very confident that that will catch us a fish. I bet the cameraman's wife on it. There we go. More trap set. Ready for more action. Sit back, chill out, and uh, make some more PVA bags because we seem to be going through them rather quickly. I've definitely decided on here, uh, you've got two sizes there that I've done today, 15s and 10s. Definitely through the daytime you want 15s because there's a lot of nuisance fishing here. So it's trial and error, isn't it, learning what you're fishing for, but in the daytime, I've had a lot of little bites on those 15 mils, so they're obviously polishing them off. I've just started to feed a bit heavier with 15s and using 15s in the mesh bags, and we've just got a bite straight away whether it's that time of day anyway, which is probably part, part of it, but it's definitely worth fishing slightly bigger baits on these waters where you've got a mixed fishery with silvers in it. So bear that in mind if you're coming to Aston Park and you're gonna fish a little lake, fish bigger baits. It's definitely fishing these margins. I don't wanna chop and change too much, just give these another, I don't know, half an hour. Let a bit more shade come, because it's a bit patchy, that shade down the right, which is where I wanna put a rod. A bit patchy at the minute, still a bit of sun on it, so as soon as that's in total shade, I'll drop a rig on it. In fact, I'm gonna drop a little bit of bait on it now. I'll just sort of prime it, so to speak. Down this right hand edge, there's a load of pads and loads of, uh, loads of reeds. Right on this margin line, it's quite deep, this inside line as well, because this is sort of the dam end of the lake. So the depth is here. So I think they will come tight in. So let's have a sneak down and pop a bit of bait in. I'm gonna put some 15 mils in here as well. Just so I know that some bigger bait's gone down in case there's any smaller fish. I'm gonna put a few in. And we're gonna try and catch one in the margins. I'm a bit impatient today. <laughs> Chopping and changing, but I'm pretty sure if we were gonna catch on that zig, we'd have caught them pretty quick. Maybe it's the wrong colour, I don't know. But um, nick a little bag on, give it a little booster with this stuff, bag and bait booster. It's PVA friendly this as well, so you can squirt it on your little bags. So I had a little bit of attraction. But, um, try a little 10 milli bag. 10 millis on the hook. And uh, we'll get this lowered into that margin spot and see if we can. When you put these PVA bags on, careful not to put it through the actual knot. 
that you've tied because it could clog the up point and you get a mistake. Now you can pour these on straight on if you want to, or if you want to inject it into PBA bags, you can take that off and force that into the bag. I'll just give this a squirt and boost it up. You better do in a few of these beforehand because they don't, um, doesn't melt your PBA and I'll give it a bit longer to soak into the bait. But these, these big hit boilers, they are instant action boilers. They're heavily dosed with flavor and ingredients to try and draw quick bites on these day ticket venues. Now I'm literally gonna lo lower this down onto the edge of those pads that keep knocking down there and see if we can get a fish. Cause there's definitely fish coming now it's gone shady. Cause they're knocking the pads. Whether we'll get it out of these pads, because I can imagine the first thing it's going to do is going to run. So I'm not going to put it in the pad. It's going to lower it on the edge quite deep there. Only about five and a half foot. There's fish moving already in them pads. I don't know how big they are, but I'm not going to set this clutch too slack because it's literally going to be hit and hold, I think, if it goes in those, in those pads. I'll just tighten it up a little bit and then just release a bit. So you've got a foot or so lay on the deck. Fish are fairly, fairly tight clutch. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, when you're fishing their pads and snags and stuff, you want to have a tight clutch. You don't want it ripping yards off before you can get to the rod. Another important thing, a little beetle, is literally, as they say, sit on the rods, because if that goes, it'll be in them pads and I'll lose the fish before I can even get to the rods, I would imagine. So I'm literally gonna sit on that, as they say, in hope of some fast action. Take on that right hand rod, I don't know if it was a lot, what it was, but it ripped off, bouncing the rod tip right, and I left it with nothing there. Whether it was a trailer or something, I don't know. Probably, yeah, there's a few of them knocking them biggest fish in the light though from the, the way it just swam straight in this might be one that we return fairly swiftly and try and target its big brother because it's not an actual carp oh. wow Dodgy -eyed. look at those greedy fish that's what was eating almost 10 millis before this is most definitely the first wide caught on a carp shoot so <laughs> it's somewhere in the bottom of this <laughs> Oh man, in fact, we won't get it out of the water. We don't want to damage him. Oh, this is what an eyed looks like. And they've got a big mouth, as you can see. <laughs> Somehow I managed to gorge. 115 mil boilies. Well, there you go. That's the eyed fishing lesson on Catch More Series and we'll see you next time and hopefully we'll catch some carps.
snag me. All right, it's cool. It's all right, he's out. I literally placed that in that margin about, what? Five minutes ago, I was tying up some more bags. Holy mesh. He comes to cap. Beautiful, beauty barbless hooks, they pop straight out. It's not a monster, so we'll just get this one straight back. And we'll try and catch another one as quick as we can. Right, it's got to that time of day where the fish are going to come into the margins. It's a typical commercial, so what the fish do, they come into the margins three or four o'clock when the match ends. So we're going to mimic that. We're going to put a load of bait either side near these platforms because it's quite tightly pegged these areas. Um, so we're going to pile a load in, half a bucket either side. We're going to put a rig over it. We're going to crush some boilers up as well. We're going to put rigs in the margins and uh, I think we're going to have a bit of action in the next hour. Let's get some bait in and see how it goes. Don't be shy with this stuff. You can, there's loads of particles in here, so it might look a lot. Cools in this range. This is the uh, hemp crush maize. As you can see, there's loads of bits of crush maize in here, and they're sort of nuisance fish resistant. So they're perfect for carp fishing. You know what carp are like? They love coming in the margins late on, especially on these commercials. So we're not going to stick it too far, but we're going to attract loads of fish in with this. Don't matter if a lot of small fish come in, them carp will come in and we'll just bully them straight out. We'll put a few boilers in as well, so we're putting a few hook baits in. Let's get some rigs placed over these two margin spots and we'll see how we get on, eh? That'll be a take, that. Right, we just chucked this one out about 30 yards. We put a little PVA mesh bag on it, with about six boilies in, and we catapulted probably about 20 boilies tied to it once I cast the lead in. So all the boilies went right in the same hole as the lead going in, so it's nice and tight, little pile. And I was just debating whether to bring it in and put it in that margin where you've just seen me pile all that particle. And off it ripped. So we've got the left hand rod over the particle. And this one's staying on the boilers, I think, for a little bit. We'll give them a chance to come in on that particle. And there's definitely fish out there. Big as I thought it was, but okay, that one it spooked away, hot tailed it out of the swim. A small landing net in this one because we're in the pads. The big net will be a bit harder to maneuver. It's common anyway.
It's only giving a good account of itself. Come on. He's in the net. Bad common that. Ooh. So we caught this one on a single boiler, 15 mil spice, krill and garlic with a little mesh bag, about six boilies in it. Chucked it in and we've catapulted about 20 boilies straight over the spot, exactly where that lad landed. So we've got a nice little patch of boilies. This is um straight in on it and we've had a fairly quick response. So I think that tax is proving okay. So we're going to continue with that on one rod and the other is going to go, the other rod is going to go back in the margins where you just seen us put all that particle that hemp and uh, crushed maize. So we've got two or three lines going at the minute so we can rotate them and uh, I'm sure these fish are going to keep coming. Happy start. Right, a quick update. We started the session. We had a bit of brekkie when we got here. Um, Sorted a few rigs out. I'd start from scratch, make the rods up. But um, we've caught some fish. So we've fished the margins. We've fished long. We've put boilies out long. We've catapulted boilies into the spot where we've cast into. We've fished little mesh bags over that boosted with those liquid boosters that I showed you and talked about. Is running rigs on here on barber sucks. Don't worry about the barber sucks. Loads of people have got an issue with barber sucks. You don't lose fish on barber sucks. <laughs> oh, trust me on it. We've had three fish already. They've got us in snags. They've got us in the pads. We've got them all out. No problem. So we've, we've had a fish out of the margins, we've sneaked one out of the margins, we've had a couple long, we've lost a fish um, that sort of did me on the tape, which done me. Um, we've had loads of liners, the fish have definitely moved into the margins, I've put loads of particle in that margin because I'm pretty sure there's lots of small fish in here. They'll be on it first, but I'm sure they'll draw in the carp. I think as the light fades we're going to get lots of activity this evening. So we've got a bit of a light set up so we can see and film some fish this evening. But first of all we're going to get something to eat now because uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a busy night. I'm going to catch up with Ben, share a few stories. Ben is involved with Angling Escape so he'll tell me a little bit about his foreign fishing, France, Spain and other areas, Belgium, Holland that he's involved in. So we'll have a bit of a chat about his fishing abroad uh, and we'll catch up with him. we'll catch another fish hopefully. We've just double up with landing nets. The old Witchwood specimen net. I'll use that to catch any smaller ones. Just for speed really, more than anything. A bit easier to handle as well. Or if we get a double take. Ripping it up here in this edge. Now the sun's dropped behind the trees. It's all shaded down this bottom end. So, I think we pick the right end of the lake. Let's see how long it takes for that one to rip off. I suspect it'll be quite quick if you're there. Looks like we might have the old lake to ourselves this evening unless we get any more carpets coming on after work. Right, well, we were just having a bite to eat after that update and um, that spot on the left margin where I've actually filled it in with particle. I'm talking like a three kilo bucket. Um, expecting action in the night. It's, it's gone straight away. Handful of boilies over the top, matching boilies to match the hook bait. Uh, just sitting down to enjoy my curry and uh, he ripped off. So, as I said, as I expected rather, he'd come straight over that particle mix as the light starting to fade. So, there was a lot of bait down there. And it just shows you, you can do need to put quite a bit of bait in on these venues. I thought there'd be a lot of silvers in here, so hence I put a lot of bait out. You don't know what's going to get mopped up before the car comes to it.
Muito bom. It's going to be a busy night. <laughs> right, we're just going to finish our curry and we'll leave that fish to recoup for five minutes. It's sound in the net there, it's not going anywhere. We'll give it a few minutes to recover and then we'll uh, have a look at it, eh? Margin spot we piled, uh, we piled a load of particle in that margin on the left hand side uh, just before it went dark. We started to cook a bit of tea and lo and behold it ripped off. <laughs> but we ain't unhappy about that are we when they like this. Nice chunky sort of mid double common right, that margin spot and the spicy cool boilies which it's picked out over that mass of particles. Uh, it's done the trick. So we're going to put that rab back on, we're going to put a bit more particle on it and we're going to see if we can catch another one. I think we're going to be in for a busy night, don't you? Right, um, well I've not had a lot of sleep, so that tells you one thing, hey? We've caught quite a few fish through the night, off uh, off these margin spots. In fact, it got that crazy catching that many fish. I ended up putting the rods long because we were getting loads of line as fish were coming in. Uh, and before it eventually ripped off, they were letting me know they were there, so I, I couldn't sleep. I was like perched next to the rods, waiting for it to rip off. Then I'd get back in bed and it wouldn't go and then 10 minutes later it would go so it was a bit like that. So in the end I put the rods a bit long and just fished mesh bags and catapulted boilies over them. It seemed to take longer to get a bite but it enabled me to get a bit of sleep so if you come into Aston Park you want to fish lilies and you don't <laughs> and you like your sleep forget it because there's loads of fish in here and you will catch them in the evenings if you're a bit stealthy and you you know feed it right. Put a bit of bait in the edges lower your rigs over nice and tidy fishing you should catch plenty of fish so that's my experience anyway so it's been a pretty hectic night so as you can tell i'm still pretty tired because of lack of sleep so i'm going to try and sneak another half hour before the rods go off again so hopefully i'll see you soon with a bacon sandwich being pushed in front of my nose ben <laughs> see you later mate Nice little bunch. Yeah, I don't think, because they're not coming off too easy. Come on. Oh, yes. Do you remember when you was a kid and you used to, like, bite the shells open? You probably won't remember doing anything like that. 
because they're of a different era to me. But when we were kids, you had to go and get them early. Otherwise, other kids would get them, but unfortunately, they weren't open, they weren't ripe, so they weren't splitting open. So you used to sit there and bite off the shell. It's really sour, and they're still white inside until um, until they open riper, probably later in September. Well, here's a baby conker. <laughs> probably make a good hook bait that. Shall we try it? Got a hair rig. Right, that's enough conker foraging, I think. Found another little ripe one, but they're not, they're not ready yet, are they? We've come, we'll have to come back and do another feature on here in about two weeks. The conker's ripe. <laughs> Need to boost some boilies and get them in those margins. <laughs> While we're waiting, let's tell you about a few little tips. These rods are going to rip off any minute, pretty sure of that. But I've got a spare minute, let's get some little product tips going for you. Bag and bait booster, it's PVA friendly, this stuff, so you can use it on your mesh bags. You've probably seen me earlier, I've been squirting it all over those little PVA mesh bags. But here's another tip for you as well as having a screw off little pointy top, which you can push into those PVA solid bags, you can unscrew the whole top off. Now these little, uh, well they're all the Crafty Catcher bags actually, but these little 250 gram packs are perfect for this. Uh, now you can get 10 mil sizes and 15 mil sizes, these are 10s because I've been pinging them out with a catapult all day, but if you want to enrich them and boost them even further with the same matching liquid, that spicy quill and garlic, you can match each one of the range with its bait booster uh, and these little 250 mil bottles are perfect so all you do is pour a bit in there so you can see I've still got loads of that left you don't have to pour the full bottle in um, and these bags are resealable so zip seal it like thus give it a shake make sure all the boilers are coated in the liquid and leave that as long as you want really the longer you leave it the better it'll draw those liquids will draw into the bait and then when they're in the water they're going to have a longer period where they're leaching out the, the liquid flavors into the water column and that should draw fish down even quicker so that's all going in the margin soon i'll leave that to soak in and then i'm going to trickle them into the margin spots and hopefully draw them fish right into those lily pads in the edges there so yeah pretty sure that will pull us a bite give it a try well, it's coming towards the end of the session. We've had a fantastic session. We've caught a few fish on this new edition of Catch More. Um, I've just seen a few fish in this margin as I'm packing up. So I've had a little wander down. I've placed a rig in this corner. Last chance saloon to see if we can nick one final carp before we go. But even if we don't, it's been a brilliant session. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you've picked a few tips up on how to fish Aston Park and maybe use them on the waters that you fish. If it's not Aston Park, if you're not a local guy, but do give this place a go. There's loads of fish in here. It's a cracking little venue. Um, really enjoyed it. Hope you've learned a few tips as I say, and we'll catch you next time on Catch More.